Life is full. It's full of beautiful moments, hard moments, and a whole lot of mundane in between. Often we find ourselves going through the motions and we end up seeing mostly the hard, mostly the boring, and failing to see the good in our days at all. With Intention is a podcast about changing the narrative. I'm your host, Desiree, and I'm no expert at living intentionally. I'm just here to share my personal learnings alongside stories from others about how we're learning to see the beauty in the mundane, celebrate our beautiful, ordinary, everyday lives, and approach every aspect of them with intention. We'll talk about things like motherhood and family, reflecting and taking care of ourselves, our work, our homes, all the things that make up our days. My hope is that you'll leave our conversations reminded that our beautiful, hard, ordinary, mundane days, this messy life, it's full of good and it's full of purpose and it's meant to be lived well with the utmost intention. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get to today's episode. Welcome back to With Intention. Today, I am bringing you a guest episode with Lauren Jones. She is a mom to three, three and under, and we talk about a lot of different things today, but we hone in on simplifying food and finding time for the things that you love when you have a lot on your plate, as Lauren does as a mom of three toddlers. Lauren also discusses her journey with being off of social media completely for two years now, especially off of Instagram, specifically in Facebook. And that was honestly not even something I was planning to talk about with her. But once she kind of mentioned it, I had to dive deeper into it. And I really think that that part of this conversation is going to encourage you, especially if you feel discouraged or overwhelmed or addicted to social media in any way. I love that this conversation just feels like one between friends that you get to listen in on, whether it's just me talking to you here or a guest and I talking. I want it to feel like you've got your drink of choice. We've got our coffee slash drink of choice and we are just having a coffee date together and I am so grateful for you. I'm so grateful that you're listening in. So grateful that you're here. I hope that this is a space where you feel seen and heard. I have just had this vision more so often that I want guest episodes and I want all of my episodes to feel like that, to just feel like a coffee date, feel like a conversation, feel like a place where you can come and be heard and seen and feel like you are not alone. So I hope with intention is a place like that for you. I did not mean to ramble on about that, but without further ado, let's get to this conversation with Lauren. All right. Well, I am so excited to have Lauren on the podcast today. We are going to be talking all things feeding little ones and just life with three kids in general, because Lauren is a mom to three, three and under. So before we really get started, Lauren, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Yes, for sure. Thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to get talking with you. And uh, my name is Lauren. And I most importantly, uh, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. That is first and foremost in our life. And it's a big thing in our family. So just to start off by saying that um, my family and I live in Boise, Idaho. So we have a very outdoorsy place to live. We're always outside hiking and biking and running. And we're very active over here. And we're excited because the weather's getting nice. And um, So yeah, that's where we are from. And I've been married to my husband Levi for just about 10 years. We're coming up on our 10 year anniversary in June, which is crazy to think that it's been 10 years. I still can't believe that. (laughs) And then we've had three little boys who are all three and under. So my oldest Scott, he is three. Layton is two and Brooks just turned one a few weeks ago. So they're all very close in age. My two oldest are 12 months apart. And then my second and third are 15 months apart. So that's the age gap. If anybody's wondering about that, I do stay at home with them full time. I have little things on the side I'm working on and I have uh, a lot of passions inside of that. I guess we can dive into that a little bit later, but I grew up playing tennis my whole life. I played competitively through college and then I played in the pros after college. So that was a huge part of my life before I had kids, before I was married. And then I had kids. I retired from tennis. I got hurt actually. And I took up marathon running. And so I have a tender spot in my heart for like all things fitness and health. That kind of has bled into other parts of my life, which is simplifying life, living minimally, and just kind of going at life full force. And I do think like the background in tennis and being um, active has really helped 
in those areas too. And I have a podcast called The Simple Life Project Podcast that mirror all of those passions that I was saying before. And I also have a blog that I started. So it's been really fun to have that as a creative outlet for me over the past few years while staying at home with my kids. So that was kind of long-winded, but that's who I am and what I do. (laughs) No, I love it. And I actually didn't know that about you, that you were professional tennis player and that that's a big part of your life. So I'll probably be asking you a little bit more about that too, at least specifically like what that looks like in your life now. Um, Like you said, you train for marathons now and, you know, like to stay active. So I think that's Mm -hmm. always a question, uh, especially for moms who have multiple little ones of how do you find the time for that? So we'll get to that because I think that will fit (laughs) into conversation later. The first thing I actually want to dive into is something that is very much related to that. And that is food because I, I can, I know this because I've looked at your blog and I've, I've seen the things that you share eating to obviously like fuel that lifestyle. If you are training for marathons and everything is another story. And especially again, when you have three little ones. So one of your passions is simplifying food. And I would love to hear more of that, um, especially when you've got a lot on your plate, like three kids under three and under or whatever it is that, you know, anyone listening in that maybe is struggling with this idea of how do I feed my family every single meal every single day? And I think the pandemic has like amplified that because we're all home all the time. Not everyone, but you know what I mean? Like that's just the more common situation than mm-hmm. it used to be. So I want to talk about that, especially for our kids. But if you want to talk about like how you do it as a family in general, but first let's talk a little bit about how you simplify food when feeding three toddlers. Yeah. I mean, you have a daughter as well. She's pretty young as well, right? How old is she? Yeah, she's three. Okay. So she's three. So you're in the same boat as me. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's funny because every kid has their own like personality, right? So you could have a really picky eater or you could have just a great eater. And it's a lot just based off how the kid is wired. And uh, for me with three kids, I they all are so different. So my first son, he is like my clone and he is a completely picky eater. And so good thing for me is I can sympathize with him. I understand what it's like to really not like a whole lot of foods and just to like my basic simple things. And so I can kind of, um, I can understand him. My other son, my middle son, Leighton, he eats everything and he makes my life so easy. And I love that part of him. And then my one-year-old, he's at this phase where, uh, you know, they eat everything. They're still exploring and he hasn't turned one or the other yet. Usually with my other two, it happened right around like the year and a half mark or the close to two where they started to have an opinion about things. But I think the key for like for our family at least is to just not overcomplicate food. Simple and whole foods are what we focus on and what works for us. So we try not to buy too many snacky things in packages. Snacks, I think for the first part of the simplification thing is just like not overcomplicating food in general and snacks are a place to start with that. So we, yeah, we definitely don't do a whole lot of the packages. I'm trying to just get away from it because it just was a pretty negative thing in our household. It would take over like the kids eating, they wouldn't eat the meals I would make. They would only go for the snacks. So just, um, kind of finding that pain point, I guess. And I'll dive into this a little bit later, but like really identifying what's the pain point for me right now, it's my kids are eating too many snacks and I, they won't eat their meals. So when we identified that and kind of stopped buying the packages and we started making them ourselves and just offering whole foods, it, the snack consumption went down quite a bit and the real food, uh, went up. So that was a really nice thing to kind of identify. And then our food rhythm kind of goes like this in our household. So we focus on a larger breakfast with a smoothie. So our midday snack is later on, but the kids wake up around seven And the minute they get up, I'll blend them up a smoothie. And I don't know why, but smoothies make my heart happy because Mm -hmm. I can literally add anything I want into them. And I feel very good. So for example, you can add in superfoods to their smoothie in the morning. And that's the first thing that hits their body in the morning. And it, I don't know, it just gives you, it kind of puts the pressure off for the rest of the day. Like, okay, I know they had a full handful of spinach in that smoothie. I like to add avocados for healthy fat. Um, I also like to add hemp hearts or chia seeds. Um, 
bee pollen even. I don't know. Have you heard of bee pollen? I have. Smoothies? I haven't, I haven't tried it though, but I have heard of it. It's, it's awesome. Like it, it doesn't taste like anything, but it's really good with anti-inflammatory and a little bit of protein. So I'll, I'll add that sometimes or, um, cauliflower. It makes a smoothie really, um, creamy. So you can just throw in random things to a smoothie in the morning. And, um, it really kind of sets the whole day up for success because they're starting off on such a good note, you know, like a healthy fat, high calorie note. And then they're not finding themselves hungry 10 minutes later. So we like to focus on larger breakfasts with a smoothie. And that's kind of like my, I would say, shining, like big focus for the day in the kitchen is the breakfast part. And um, once we can get through breakfast and clean up from that, then the kids are good for a couple of hours. And then we'll do like a small afternoon snack before lunch. And it happens like around 10 or so. So that's... Um, that's kind of half of our day and then we'll do lunch and then we'll do a snack and then we'll do dinner. So it's kind of broken out into sections, I guess, if you will, of, um, kind of food windows. I like to think of it in food windows, like, okay, it's breakfast time. It's snack time. It's lunch time. It's snack time. It's dinner time. And anything outside of that, we're, we're playing or we're doing other things. I think the the snack pain point that you pointed out is huge, especially with toddlers. But um, I feel like the minute she turned three, she was just like asking for snacks all day. And part of that I know is having packaged things. If we do have more of them, I can totally relate to that. If we have more packaged things in the house, she will gravitate towards them. One thing I I try to do, and I, I think I need to see if I can apply it to the rest of the day is if she's hungry before dinner and asking for snacks before dinner, I give her cut up veggies and she will eat them because she's actually hungry and not just wanting a snack. And it's not going to fill her up too much before dinner, but it's hard. I don't know. I think that that is something that's hard for a lot of us is that our toddlers do always, at least in both of our experiences, toddlers love snacks. So when they do ask for snacks, like do your kids ask for snacks at other points of the day or have you kind of made a rhythm around that? Um, when they do, what's kind of your strategy there? Yeah. I mean, snacks are always asked for. So the, <laughs> that's what was making me so crazy. We have, we were spending a lot of money because I mean, snacks are expensive at the store. It would kill my budget at the grocery store. And I just remember thinking like, okay, well, we're done with it. I'm done. I'm sick of being asked and I am going to go crazy. So we're done with it. So I literally stopped buying the package things, like I said before, but when they ask for a snack, I'll hand them. Yeah. Like you said, a little, you know, a carrot stick, or I will hand them an apple or an orange. I'll peel an orange for them. And if they don't want that, then I'll just say, okay, well, we'll wait. We'll wait till the rest of the, you know, till our meal, our next meal is made. And then I'll try to get them focused on something else. Sometimes I feel like they ask because they are getting bored. And so I'll just try to change up the activity or we'll go outside or we'll do something to get their minds off of it. Because like you said before, if you hand something to them, if they're actually hungry, they're going to eat it. So I'll just give them something quick like fruit or, um, you know, something small. And if they don't eat that, it's kind of my like mental note. Okay. They're just bored. So let's not dive into a big granola bar or something. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think that that's like a good question to have in the back of our minds too, is are they just bored? I am just grateful for you know, those tips because I think a lot of people have that same experience of literally going crazy if their kids are going to ask for a snack one more time within that day. <laughs> Talking about food and kind of moving into food for the whole family, what are some of your biggest tips for meal planning? I think that's one of the number one questions I get. And I have so many different answers because it really, for me, it depends on the season of life I'm in and, you know, what, what we're focusing on with nutrition at that time. But I love to hear just how others do this and how others simplify this. So what works for you and your family when it comes to meal planning? Yeah, definitely. I have completely wrote off meal planning. I think it was two, maybe three years ago. I was like hardcore on the bandwagon. Of, I don't meal plan. I just do. And let me tell you, like for me, that did not work. I was overspending at the grocery <laughs> store. I had no idea what I was making for the week. I was all over the place. I was stressed. And then I threw kids into the mix. And then I started to realize, okay, 
I can't really be the no meal planner person. I have to have some kind of a plan. And so I don't know, this organically happened for me, but I figured out a system that works for my family and I'm never going to let it go. And I've written about it. I've talked about it on my podcast. I've just been so passionate about it because it truly does take away all of the pain points in my family when it comes to planning meals, because as you know, and everybody listening know, meal planning is hard and it is stressful and making food every day for your family, you can get burnt out. It's just a very hard, never ending, I guess, hamster wheel, if you will call that. So what we like to do in our family, and I've just kind of figured it out for for how my brain best works is I'll take a sheet of paper, just like a to-do sheet or like a to-do list sheet. I'm saying that right. I don't know if I am. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I will put, uh, I'll get my Pinterest board out or I'll get a few of my cookbooks out. And I, on one side of the paper, I'll put down five or six recipes that I want to make or meals that I like to make. And usually they're more dinner focused. So for example, I'll do like a tortilla soup one night and then I'll do a spaghetti and meatballs one night and then I'll do a vegan dish. I like to mix it up between like red meat, chicken, plant-based. That way we're getting a full circle kind of diet, if you will. I'm not doing like all red meat or all chicken. I'm doing just a variety. So I'll pick a few meals that I want to make for the week and I usually only do six because I know one of the days we're usually out we're at family's houses or friends have, you know, have us over something. So I never do seven meals. I only do six and I'll put those down on a sheet of paper and I won't even pigeonhole myself into like Monday we're having tortilla soup and Tuesday we're having a vegan curry or I'm not doing that. I'm just putting six meals down on a sheet of paper and then I'll turn it around and I will have the grocery list of what I need to buy for that stuff. And a lot of it's really simple. So I have it in my pantry, but um, I'll do like a quick pantry peek in and a fridge peek in to just see what I already have. And then I'll write down ingredients to what I need to buy at the store. So um, I'll have the ingredient list on the other side of the sheet of paper and then I'll draw a line. I hope this is easy to follow, but yeah, uh, I'll draw a line and then I'll have um, some breakfast ideas that I want to make for the week. So for instance, I will, um, I'll do, you know, sourdough pancakes one day. I'll do an egg bacon scramble the next day. We'll do avocado toast the next day. But I'll just have a few items jotted down in my on my sheet of paper. So when I'm in the thick of a Monday morning, I can look at my sheet and be like, okay, I have a couple options for breakfast. I have all of these ingredients in my pantry, in my fridge. Which one do I want to make? So it's just kind of nice to be able to glance and just know, okay, I have everything for this stuff. Let's figure out what we are feeling like for the day. And then I'll do the same thing for lunch ideas. I'll draw a line and I'll do some lunch ideas. And then I will do, so I have snack and then I'll do some snack ideas. So it's kind of very loose where I'm not pigeonholing a meal to a day, but I'm just giving myself creative ideas that I can go back throughout the week and look And I'll have all the ingredients for it from what I bought at the store. So uh, I just simply too, I just take a screenshot or I, if I'm writing it on my computer or I'll take a screenshot on my phone of the, um, of the list. So I'm not keeping a flimsy piece of paper, you know, out, (laughs) I'll, I'll lose that. So I'll take it. Usually I'll take a photo with my phone and I'll pull, pull back up my photos and I'll look for the day, if I'm making dinner, I'll go ahead and say, okay, here's my options for dinner. I have like five different options. Which one do I want to make? What are we feeling like? What, what do we have time for? And it just kind of simplifies, I guess, my brain space, if that makes sense. Like I'm not having to be creative because I already did all the creativity on the weekend. So that has helped me huge, I would say, with my brain space yeah. in meal planning. Yeah. And do you have like certain number of meals that you typically cycle through? Um, or you said you keep them, you keep like a list on Pinterest or, cause I think that a lot of people too have just trouble coming up with ideas week after week or just put too much pressure on themselves of, of what meals they should be making that type of thing. So yeah. where do you kind of, I don't know, where do you get meal ideas from? 
Where I have, uh, I pull out my, my cookbooks. So I have two or three cookbooks I really love to have at my house. And I'll just thumb through it on a Sunday night. I do my meal planning on a Sunday night because on Monday morning I go grocery shopping. I have help with my kids in the morning. And so I will just thumb through and say, okay, that looks really good. I'm going to write that one down this week. And I'll put the page number that it's on. Or I'll go to my pin board. I have a, a section of uh, dinner ideas and I'll just scroll through my Pinterest board and I'll pick some that look really good. And then I think we all just kind of have our staples that we like to make. So I have a, a couple of staples that I'll throw in there um, that are really tasty too. So I cycle through basically between cookbooks, Pinterest, and just my my knowledge staples that I have. And two, I don't, I don't think I mentioned this, but if you are having problems, uh, maybe get problems with creativity, maybe get a text going with some friends and say, Hey, what are you guys making for dinner tonight? And get a few different ideas from friends. Cause I've also done that too, where I've come up like short on, okay, I've made this a few times. Maybe I'll get a new idea. So that's helped me as well. Just collaborate yeah. with some friends. <laughs> Yeah, that's such a good idea. I think too, like when we talk to, I don't know, real people that we know that might have similar, you know, life's, lifestyles as us, it's the recipes they're making are probably going to be more realistic for us as well. Right. Yeah. And I think too, just not putting so much pressure on yourself to make these crazy elaborate meals is really important. I think simple is best. And sometimes when people think about meal planning and feeding toddlers, and I think they're thinking too big. Just focus on small and just focus on really simple foods and you can really build a base. Even if you don't cook a lot, I think you can still be really efficient and resourceful in your own kitchen. I mean, you can make a spaghetti and meatball or, you know, ground beef, spaghetti, red sauce and a little onion and have a great meal, you know, so, and a bagged salad, you could do that. You could have a, a great meal for the whole family. And so I don't think it takes like a lot of crazy ideas. Very simple is what I like to, um, with ingredients I'm saying is what I like to focus yeah. on. I know that as I, you know, I used to, the idea of a meal for me used to be like a casserole or some type of elaborate recipe or, you know, this chicken thigh has to have an amazing marinade on it. And that's just not right. like, that's just not who I am. And also it doesn't really fit my toddler's taste that much. Um, so it was whenever I would make something that's like some kind of casserole, I would see that she wouldn't really eat it. And I didn't really like making it anyways. And that's just personal for our family. It wasn't working for us. So now I literally make most nights a some type of protein, some type of veggie, and maybe like uh, some kind of a little heavier carb source, like a starch of some sort. And that works for us. And it, she always eats it. So it's like, it's yeah. so much simpler, but, and it is also, you know, actually being eaten by everyone. So it, it makes our lives easier for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. I, and no, you're not winning a contest. And that's another thing I would say, like, you're not cooking in a cooking contest to like win a prize. You're just trying to feed your family, like whole foods, nutritious foods. And so, yeah, focusing on a protein, a veggie and some kind of a starch, but I think that's awesome. And um, you can really get creative for that kind of thing too. Like I have a recipe that I just started making and I made it for lunch yesterday and it's so easy. It's just gnocchi. Have you heard of gnocchi, the little yeah, potato? Yeah. So we just fry it in butter, a little bit of butter, and then we'll throw pesto in there and chop up some, we do either broccoli or Brussels sprouts and we'll put pine nuts with it and Parmesan cheese. And it's, it literally takes me 10 minutes and it's the most flavorful thing you have ever tasted if you like that kind of a thing. And it yeah. is so easy. It has, you know, healthy fats in it, veggies. It's low on the protein, but um, I don't know. It just, it hits all the boxes for me and it's, it's just creative and it's easy. So I think, um, yeah, focusing on that is probably the best thing to do is just not overthinking it. I think that's kind of the thing I'm trying to hit home is don't overthink it so much. <laughs> that's so helpful. And I think that's the message that so many of us need, especially when we have little ones at home. I hope you're enjoying today's episode, but I want to take a break to thank today's sponsors that help make with intention happen. I want to thank Green Chef. Some weeks I truly just feel like I do not have the capacity to grocery shop or plan my meals at all. 
this is when I feel so grateful for Green Chef. Green Chef makes eating well easy and affordable with plans to fit every lifestyle. So whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, or just looking to eat healthier, there's a range of recipes to suit any diet or preference. Green Chef is also the first USDA certified organic meal kit company. You can enjoy clean ingredients that you trust. One thing that I love about Green Chef is that the ingredients come pre-measured, perfectly portioned, and mostly prepped, which makes the meals so easy and quick to prepare. Personally, one of my favorite Green Chef recipes that I've ever made was a Bavarian pork recipe that I just made this past week. My family could not stop eating it, including my toddler, which is another thing I love about Green Chef. My daughter is always as happy with the meals as the rest of us. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well, and you can try it today with a huge discount. Go to greenchef.com 90 intention and use code 90 intention to get $90 off, including free shipping. Again, that is greenchef.com slash 90 intention. And you can use code 90 intention to get $90 off, including free shipping. I also want to thank Pros. My hair is pretty heavy, it lacks volume, and I've just never found products that truly work for me. When I discovered Pros, I was skeptical because like I said, nothing has really worked on my hair, but I was willing to try because I love the personalization factor and I really think we need products that are suited for our unique needs when it comes to our hair. This is what Pros does. After the first time using Pros, I immediately felt a difference. Pros knows that there is more to you than just your hair type and they have given over 1 million hair consultations with their in-depth hair quiz. The quiz asks questions to help understand your hair type and issues you may be experiencing, but it also goes deeper into looking at your lifestyle. I was surprised it even takes into consideration the environment and air quality within the boundaries of your actual zip code. I was sent a unique blend from Pros that fits my hair needs. Based on my quiz answers, I used the pre-shampoo hair mask and the shampoo and conditioner that had been specially formulated for me. I love that the conditioner is brass reducing for my colored hair. My hair has never been softer, shinier, and lighter than it has using Pros. Pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair quiz and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash with intention. That's P-R-O-S E dot com slash with intention for your free in-depth hair quiz and 15% off. All right, let's get back to today's episode. I kind of want to transition to a different topic and I want to hear about what it looks like for you to have three little ones at home and specifically like you know, like you were saying when in, when you were talking to us about just what you do and what you're passionate about, how do you find time when you stay home with them? um, How do you find time for the things that you are passionate about? So how do you find time for staying active and taking care of yourself in that way? And then doing the things you love, like writing since you write on your blog or podcasting. Um, What, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I think for us, it's a lot about priority. So I'll just start, like I'll back way up. We, I think it was like three years ago, we decluttered and simplified our life. And I think that was a huge part of clearing out the clutter and like mental clutter to be able to pursue and handle having three little kids under three first. I think it's just, it's a lot mentally. It gets to me sometimes. It can be very stressful, but having a simple home that's free of clutter and um, that was the number one place we started. Uh, My husband jumped on board. We probably reduced like 75% of our items in our home. I I, want to say I'm making up a number, but we reduced a a lot of stuff in our house and it was so freeing. And the minute we did that was when I pursued creating, um, you know, a decluttering course for moms. And then I got really passionate about, you know, spreading that message that you can do it with little kids. Like I think a lot of the time people think, well, I have little kids. I can't do it right now. I'm too busy. But if you do kind of clear that space out and make, make space for yourself, you can do it with three kids. You can do it with two or with one. It's all about just prioritizing and time. And so for me, I think, I think my oldest was, yeah, maybe eight or nine months when we decluttered the items out of our house. And we just, I don't know, because he was so young, we've had that mindset going forward 
as consumers and as parents that um, the decisions we make, it kind of ultimately um, kind of sets the tone for our household. So, I mean, sure, our days are crazy. We have chaos. We have three boys, so it's just loud and rambunctious and all the things. But I definitely feel like as far as the kids stuff goes, it's very under control. And um, I think that helped when my husband and I kind of made that internal decision to check ourselves and like check our consuming habits and decisions because I knew like I would be the one to buy the toys. I would be the one to, you know, buy the clothes and to do all the things. So just having that mindset early on with kids, I think has shaped a lot of, if I'm kind of making sense, it's like my brain moving forward with having three kids so little, I can be less overwhelmed, I guess. Yeah. And it bleeds yeah. into like business and my blog and my podcast and uh, just everything that we're doing as a family. I think it all just kind of stems off of that platform, I guess. And so I think that's why I'm so passionate about it because it, I truly do feel like it has made such an impact in our family's life. And um, I just want to see that for everybody. I want to see any mom that's feeling overwhelmed or stressed out or feel like she doesn't have time for herself. I just want to tell her like, you can do it. Like you can do it. You just have to identify the pain points. And I don't want to go on a tangent, but I, yeah, very passionate about that. I hope that kind of answered part of that question. Yeah, it absolutely does. I mean, I, that's so much of what our time is taken up by, especially when we have little kids making the most massive messes (laughs) all day long. Um, The less stuff that they can make messes with that is obviously going to give us more time in our days. Um, what like what does it look like for you to actually carve out that time to be able to write, or actually carve out the time to you know be able to go on a run or whatever it is that yeah. um, you, however you move your body, and just making that space in your day. Like, what does that look like practically? Yeah, definitely. I think it all comes down to schedule for us. So my husband and I have spoken about the things that we both need in order to stay healthy, like mentally and physically. And we both are on the same page when it comes to like breaking away for a run or, you know, me saying, Hey, I need an hour to work on my blog or, you know, work on my podcast. Um, but a lot of the time we have our kids take naps. So we have mainly right now, just one nap in the afternoon from, like 1230 to like 230 ish. And so I know like that's my time to work if I need to work or get a workout in. And then they have a bedtime around seven. And so after seven, I know like, okay, I can crank for a couple of hours if I need to and, you know, do what I need to do. And so we just have those little pockets of time, as I'm sure you do too, of when you know you're, you're on with your kids and then when they're in bed and when their downtime is. And so the, I think schedule has probably been the biggest thing for me to be able to do what I'm passionate about, which is writing. And it's uh, kind of just having a creative outlet to express what I'm going through every day. And I think that just without a schedule, I don't think I could do it. I think it would be very hard to find the time, but uh, right now we still have naps and that's really been a big help. So. Yeah. And like you said earlier, I mean, if you didn't go through that process to declutter or if you weren't living a little more simply, that time could easily be filled with, okay, we have to clean up. This is, our house is becoming a disaster. Um, So I think that's where we get to this point as moms of saying like, we don't have time. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to take care of myself. But what is taking up those pockets of time that you do have. And um, I love that you said just like having a schedule and that you talked about those free pockets of time because that's the thing, like all of us have those pockets, but what are we filling them with? And it might not be nap time and nighttime. Like it just, we have pockets of time within our day somewhere, right? Um, Yes. It's just, what are we filling them with? Exactly. And I, I think I mentioned to you before, but I'm, I was off social media. So that's helped me a lot as well because I have, um, I made that decision too. Uh, I think it was like two years ago and I'm not saying social media is bad because I know like social media can be really good and social media is kind of like the thing where however you use it is how it affects you. So if you use it for business and if you use it for creativity, like 
it's going to be really good. And then if you use it for other things, it could be a little more negative. So it really just depends on, on how it's being used. But I did feel like I was wasting a little bit too much time there. And I think since been being off of it, it's been to the, to the most, for the most part, like being off, I'm not off of Pinterest or, um, YouTube or anything like that. But I, I think that has opened up time for me as well in that area. <laughs> yeah. And what, how long have you been off of social media? At least Instagram so, and Facebook. Yeah, it was weird. It was like an organic, kind of an organic thing that came about without me really being ready for it. But I remember it was September, right about two years ago. I've been off Instagram. I, um, I just, God like convicted me and I was in the shower. I remember I was just thinking about the day and then I just heard this like loud and clear voice that said like, it's time to be done with Instagram. It was the weirdest thing. Like I sound crazy when I say it, but it was true. And I literally got out of the shower and deleted my account within 10 minutes and haven't looked back. And I, I think, um, with Facebook, it was a little bit later I had a business that I was trying to nurture through a Facebook page. And so I wanted to keep that going. And, um, that was my kind of, uh, little bit of a hold back on deleting Facebook, but I've been off Facebook for four months now. So it's been about four months off of both and, um, definitely just God led. I truly don't know why I think I might've been spending too much time on it, scrolling or whatnot, but Um, I'm just kind of following his lead and uh, he's opened up different creative outlets for me, whether it be with my blog that I, I I just started it. So it's pretty new or with, um, you know, I'm going to be doing a YouTube channel and then my podcast. I think he's just opening up different avenues of my life to kind of show me how I can be creative. And um, I guess that's my short and condensed version of my social media story, but it's definitely been like very empowering and impactful as a mom Um, I will say like I was doing a lot of reflecting a couple of weeks ago about it and I just feel more confident as a mom. I'm very, um, I don't see everybody's day to day, so I miss a lot, but I also feel really confident what we're doing and I don't second guess myself as much just because I'm not seeing as much. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but, um, it's definitely been healthy for me and I, I do, I do like the direction it's going. So I might go back. I'm not sure. But right now I feel pretty good about where we're at. Yeah. And I think that's really powerful. I think a lot of people struggle with social media. I think the struggle has gotten worse um, throughout the pandemic. I see it all the time. I'm just like memes about how screen time is up and everything. And yeah, it's to, to hear a story that you can just completely, you know, go away from it and not look back for two years and be better for it. Uh, that's, I think just inspiring for a lot of people for sure. I think think that the biggest thing when people think about doing that, that they get scared about is like missing out and not being connected to people. Because I do know like social media is so awesome for that reason. Like you can connect with people and it's, there's so many good things about it. And I guess one of the, my biggest worries was as I was hitting delete, I'm like, wait, I think I have, I have worries about this. And um, my worry was, yeah, I'm going to miss out. And so I wrote a list on a piece of paper, actually on my, my phone, not a piece of paper, but the notes app on my phone. And I wrote down all the people that I was going to truly like miss and that I wanted to stay in contact with. And so I've made it like a, a point to text them, call them, write to them, send them pictures and like really stay connected to them. And it's actually been really cool to see because I feel like I have more intimate relationships with them now because we're really sharing like, you know, parts of our day that are not always pretty and we're sharing things that we just truly want to share with them. And so I don't feel like I'm missing out a lot, but on certain things I am, but for the main people that I was holding on to for, I'm just as caught up with their lives and they're just as caught up in my life. So it's been really pretty good. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Okay. So I have two questions that I ask every guest and one of them is what is one way you live intentionally in your daily life, which I feel like we've talked about a lot of things already that you've done, but if you could think of one, I don't know, one daily practice that you have that you haven't talked about, um, what is, what does that look like for you? 
Yeah, I would say, um, well, I have a few, but daily exercise, I mentioned, I think 30 minutes for me, it helps clear my head, especially with little ones. That's really big. And um, I want to say I'm in the Bible every day at this time, but I'm not like I do have times where I'm just like on the fly. But um, I think the thing that I've been really working on to be intentional about in my daily life, probably the last like six months is to uh, just focus on being grateful for something that day, whether it's like, and it sounds so silly and sm- like it's so cliche, but it really does help me if I'm feeling like, um, I don't know, any sort of way. I just feel like if I throw out a situation, if I'm in traffic or, you know, someone cuts me off or something happens, I'm like, okay, I'm thankful I have a car. Like some people don't. Mm-hmm. So little yeah. things, you know, just one little th- thought of gratefulness every day. I've been really trying to focus on that. Um, especially like as a mom, stay at home mom, like the days can feel long with the kids and even just being thankful for their health and their, their lives in general. Um, it's just been, it's been really helpful for me for sure. So that's, that's kind of a, a new practice I would say within the last six months. Yeah. That's a game changer for sure to incorporate gratitude in any way. And then my last question is what is something that you're loving right now? Oh man. I have so many. That's so, <laughs> I'll just say two really quick. Um, first is sourdough starter. Do you do a sourdough starter? I didn't. And I, I, I just oh, say I didn't, I didn't as in like, that was something that so many people were doing during the pandemic, <laughs> I know, right? but, but I don't, and I want to, but I, yeah, I haven't really ventured into it. Okay. Well, that's been so fun to do. I've been making like all sorts of things, not just bread, but like pancakes and muffins. And we did a sourdough chocolate cake for my one-year-old's birthday recently. It's just been super fun to play with, but um, that's been fun. And then also I want to just shout from the mountaintop about something that has been really great for my kids is we do this. I'm not sure if your libraries do it, but where I live, there's a rent out system with like, you can rent out toys and STEM activities and robots and magnetiles and all sorts of different things. And so we pared down our toys. We have, we have, we have toys, but it's nice to get new toys in the mix and we'll just rent out toys from the library and we'll give them back a week later or two weeks later and we'll rent a new one out and we'll get books. And that's been really awesome for me to utilize our library system because the boys really love going to pick out the new toy and they love to go get the books and it just keeps things really alive and vibrant in our house. And so I would say if you haven't done that, go for it. It's so awesome. I don't know if you guys do that either, but it's, yeah, we, we have actually not like utilized our library much since things were more shut down and everything. And then we moved to a new area. So that's something I need to explore and has been like on my mind. So um, thank you for the reminder of that too. Yeah, it's literally changed my life. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I love the library. I didn't yeah. realize I loved it. I know I, I miss going to the library like pre pandemic. And, um, I know that, you know, I had just haven't even looked into the ones near me at our new house. So on my to do list now for sure. (laughs) Great. Yeah. Awesome. And then I don't know, have you heard of read aloud revival at all? I have. Yes. Okay. She's awesome. She sends out book lists every month of different like books. If um, do you get it? It's no, I don't have a list, but I, or I don't get the list, but I need I need to. I need to get on that list too. <laughs> yeah, get on the list because she'll send you books for March that are, you know, St. Patrick's Day themed and then Easter themed and all these things. And it makes it really easy because a lot of libraries now are curbside. So you have to like pick your own yeah. books. And I found that to be so hard because I didn't know the names of all these books that I needed to get. So she kind of does the work for you. And then you can type it in and then request it. And it's just, it's been really fun. So um, if you can find her, I would definitely check that out too. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, thank you for the suggestions on that. And just thank you for this conversation in general. It's just been so encouraging to me. And I know it's going to be encouraging to everyone listening in. Um, So thank you for sharing your passions around food and just simplifying life in general and um, everything else we talked about. So thank you. Uh, Thank you again for coming on the show. Yeah, it was so much fun. Thanks so much for having me. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. And as I was listening back through, 
as I was editing the episode, I realized that I don't have a challenge for this episode. I like to leave you with a challenge each week, just an application point that you could take or leave. But this episode really touched on so many different things that I think could be applicable to our lives. And I just hope that you take whatever area, whether it's food or carving out time for your passions or social media, and you find a way to apply this conversation to your life in whatever way fits you. Thank you again for being here, for listening in, and I look forward to talking to you again on the next episode.